We are in the weekly Torah portion, and I want you to please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell, and uh, get all the information. Okay, so it starts by Parsha Miketz. Uh, so this is after two years. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Yosef has been in prison altogether for, at this point, for 12 years. Originally, he was supposed to be there for 10, and instead, because he relied upon the Egyptian uh, and saying, please remember me to Pharaoh, uh, that's when uh, Hashem punished him a little more. Yeah. So he has to stay there for two extra years. But what's, what's also interesting is the dreamer goes to the dream interpreter. We have to remember how Yosef started out. Yosef was originally the dreamer. So now he, uh, now 12 years, uh, more than 12 years later, mm. but uh, he's now becoming the interpreter. He now became the interpreter of dreams. So it's just an interesting development uh, of Yosef Atzadik. So again, it's after two years of Pharaoh calling. So Pharaoh had a dream. And behold, he was standing on the Nile or beside the Nile. He wasn't sitting actually on the Nile, but he was not near the Nile. And what happens? We name Mina Yor. So behold, from the Nile, Nile River, all of Sheva Parot, there were seven cows. And what about these cows? They were especially a Fadmara, Basar. They were of good appearance and uh, healthy meat. But Tirena Ba'achu. And they were uh, grazing in the, the grasses, the, the marshland. Okay. And so what happens? And behold, in his same dream, he has seven other cows, came up after them from the Nile, of bad appearance, but dark of basar, and thin of meat, lean of meat, and they stood next to the cows, the good-looking cows, on the shore, on the shore of the Nile. This is also interesting that it went from, it came up from the Nile. Remember, he's standing on the Nile or by the Nile. But here now we have to say suddenly, al or on the shore of the Nile or the bank of the Nile. It's interesting that the Torah suddenly is being more specific where wow. these uh, animals are. Okay, and uh, so what happens? And the cows ate. Which cows? The, the bad looking, thin, a lean of meat cows ate. They ate the good looking cows. And again, what's missing there is briot basar, a healthy meat that we don't include again. We just say that they were good looking, the good looking cows. Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. Uh, a vibrio. No, I'm sorry. It does and the healthy ones. Good. Oh, Says everything. Oh. Good. 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 Veikas uh, paro and paro awoke. He was startled. He, he had a bad dream. He woke up. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, so he was uh, standing uh, like over the river. It, it was, was uh, over or on. Uh, you know, so that makes me think. Uh, well, aren't we told somewhere that uh, uh, that. Paro uh, considered put himself across as a god because he was Paro and the people, you know, that he he would go, when he woke up every morning, he would go into the river to Correct. relieve himself because humans, a, 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 a god doesn't need to do that. Right. That is correct. That is so maybe this, maybe that's what a... So kind in of a his dream, he's, he thinks he's really a god. He's in he the knows river. He's, not. he's in the river. He knows, oh, he knows he's the... not a god. <laughs> he's telling everyone else he's a god. He knows he has to go to the bathroom. Uh, so... If you look at the arch scroll of number one, it says Omed Ali, or he was standing over the river. Oh. The translation literally, and it means the Nile. So the Torah, the Nile is referred to as the river oh. because of its overriding importance in Egyptian oh. life. According to the Rashi, the or means canal. Oh. Uh, that name was used for, uh, for Nile because Egyptian farmers dug a network of canals uh, from it to irrigate to as much farmland as possible. Now. Mm. The fa that Pharaoh dreamt of himself as standing by the river, not, mind you, instead of on, it goes, it goes by, uh, and reflecting upon it, it suggests his thoughts focus on the river whose annual overflow determined the agricultural fate of Egypt for the next year. That's Hirsch. Uh, 
the Nile, which was the source of Egypt's prosperity, was venerated as a country's god. Oh. Midrashically, therefore, Pharaoh's position over mm. the Nile suggests that he heartily imagined himself oh. superior to his god. Oh. That's close to what you want to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so now the, the question could be, could ask, did Pharaoh really think the Nile was a god? I'm not sure if he did. You know, again, most of these people realize that they're deluding the people. Maybe he did. They were all they were had, all had these pagan gods anyway. But he just imagined himself as the god of gods, so to speak, right? Because he was the Paro. And so I'm standing over the river. The river we know. The river is the open. reason that the river came to him originally was because um, Yaakov gave him a bracha, and the bracha was that the water should come to meet Paro. That's where this whole mystique came oh. from. So oh. far, so it's. Uh, I mean, that's. Oh, but he hasn't done that yet. Oh. He, has, he hasn't. Done that, but no. Yeah, he hasn't done that yet. Me case. Uh, but he's going to do it on Bayigash. But that's where the whole mystique is going to come. That if it's coming to him. So now to argue as uh, who I don't know who's saying it here. I guess it's just Arsko who's saying it. Mm. But uh, oh, yeah. to say that he thinks that he's. Superior to that God, and he actually believes that the Nile is a God. I don't know. Like I said, I think most people who are in in those in the pagan religions know that they're the gods or the people aren't really gods. For the, for instance, the Egyptians uh, worshipped the lamb or, or the sheep. Okay, yeah. that was one, Aries. That yeah. was one of the things they did. Yeah. So what they do, they separated their the people who took care of the sheep. Such as the Jews in Goshen, they'll they'll separate them, and they'll be disgusted by them. Why? Because Rashi says they knew that they they knew that the priests understood that their gods were not really gods. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. you know it, it's that sort of. But they would have that power over the people if they kept that up. Right. So I, like I said, I have a problem believing. Uh -huh. If I believe that that's a god, why am I defecating in it? Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, it's, it's, he, he, he felt he was over it. Whatever, whether he believed it or didn't believe, he felt he was over it. If, if he okay. thought it was real, I'm still over it. Okay. So, yeah, you can take it either way. I'm not. Ah. I'm not against it. Okay. I'm just. Yeah. Yeah. I just have my 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 questions yeah. on that. Interesting. It, again, if I Could believe be. that this Could is be. God, why why am I? Unless it's Baal Peor, where I'm supposed to ah. defecate into it. Ah. And this is not a Baal Peor situation. This is. A Nile situation, and the only reason I'm going in is because I don't want you to see yeah, that I'm going to the bathroom. You raise a, you raise a great point, Rabbi, because I never thought of it. even like uh, the 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 Greeks and the Romans all had their various uh, gods and different statues. And and uh, uh, what did the lead did the what do you call it? Uh, uh, the people who make the, the idols. Caesar, the leader of them, really right. believed I, that. I really have a question was, with that. He was treated as a god. Caesar right. was treated as right. a god. So I have a question. Yeah, I, a, I personally have a question on that's that. If they truly believed that those gods were gods, yeah. Yeah. and uh, you raise a great point, the leaders yeah. probably didn't. <laughs> I'm the one in control. You treat me as a, a right, god. but I need to keep the masses. I need to keep the so masses. Let them have that system. Right. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm writing a book now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so what happens? See, uh, so Vayishan. So Pharaoh, like everybody else, who get, you get up at four in the morning. It's too early in the morning, so it's time to go back to sleep. Ah. So Vayishan, and he went back to sleep. He had a second dream. And behold, there were seven sheaves, uh, or ears of corn, excuse me. Olo Pekana Echad, that went up on one, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the, the, the stick that it grows on. Uh, Sprouting on a single stalk, that's what it is, okay? Oh, oh. Stalk. Uh, and it was, again, healthy and good looking. Mm. And then you had seven ears that were thin and scorched by the east wind. Some called Acharayim. They grew after them. And once again, the, the uh, thin ears of corn swallowed the seven uh, healthy full ears of the uh, of, of corn by 
Paro woke up once again, and behold, it was a dream. Why does he have to say, behold, it was a dream? Because uh, Rash explains, he understood this was a, f- a complete dream, and now it needed to be interpreted. And what's really going on there is he uh, he woke up, and he tried to go back to sleep, it says. Well, we, we surmise. He tried to go back to sleep. He couldn't go back to sleep. It was time to wake up anyway. But he realized it was one complete dream. And uh, it was all, yeah, and that's it. So that's what, now he needs to interpret it. So that's what it is. Okay. Now what happened was, came, it was in the morning, and his spirit bothered him. It banged on him, as it were. Uh, as you say, it was agitated. Okay. Vayishlach, and he said, Vayikra kol chatimei misraim yekol chachmeh. And he called for all the uh, sorcerers and for all of the uh, smart people there, uh, and all of his wise men. Vayisipir paro lahem et chalamo. And he told, paro told to them his dreams. Vayimpirt vayimpotir otam lefaro. But there was no explanation of them for faro. It's very important to say for Pharaoh. Yeah. So uh, Rashi explains, Potramayu, there were interpretations yeah. of Allah the Pharaoh, but it wasn't for Pharaoh. So I call on Nichmas Be'ezna because he wasn't listening to them. And because whatever they would say, it didn't satisfy him. Uh-huh. For instance, Shayu, oh man, what they said to him, you're going to have seven daughters, and seven daughters are going, you're going to bury seven daughters. Ah. In other words, why do you have to keep seven, seven? So it's, you have seven daughters, you'll bury seven daughters. Now, Paro, I believe it's Hirsch who, who says this, but Paro is saying uh, that as Paro, he's only going to dream for a grandiose dream of the whole country. Mm. You're telling me it's about my private life. I'm telling you, no, that's that's ridiculous. Uh-huh. The Pharaoh doesn't dream about his private life. He dreams about greater greater uh-huh. Egypt. He has an empire. Well, they were trying to connect it to him personally. Right. So if I remember correctly, that, that was a Hershian uh-huh. explanation. Uh-huh. I'm not sure yeah. if yeah. it was, but yeah. I'm pretty sure that was. Uh, but I remember reading that. So I'm, it sounds like more than a Hirsch than anybody else. But it could have also been Ramban for that matter. But I forget who said it. But it's uh, one of those two said that. That's clear. Uh, but that is something that's very important to understand. If I'm the father, and that's why when Yosef is going to interpret it, it's going to make sense to him. Like I said, these other guys, they were charlatans. So I was a charlatan. I listened to you. I try to figure out what you want to hear, by the way. That's very important. I have to know what you want to hear. And when I figure that out, I tell you what you want to hear. That's what every good charlatan does. But if the if the pharaoh wanted a real reason, so then these fake reasons aren't going to help. Okay, so that's re- why they couldn't interpret it for him. So what happens by the Bir Mashkim? So again, two years later, the Sahar Mashkim, who has returned to his position, he's a good shape right now. He's given the king the the uh, the pharaoh the drinks. And what happens by the Bir Mashkim et Paro Lemo? So he says the pharaoh saying. My sin, I must mention today. It's going to go into a whole uh, thing, but he says, I have to tell you something. Now, when you're looking at that, you're thinking, what's his sin? What's the sin? What's he going to mention? He, oh, he, now he's re- realizing that he didn't talk about far, uh, Yosef two years ago he's, when he was supposed to come. Remember, when he was released from jail, oh. what, if, what, if, what did Yosef ask? Remember me to Pharaoh. But that's only a, would be a, perhaps a sin of violation toward his promise to, uh, to Yosef. I think right. what he's saying to Paro is that I'm sorry, I but I have to mention to you that you threw me in jail. Right. So <laughs> right. Right. So no, that's clearly what we want to mention. It's really what Why we should you to bring say. up that the king threw you in jail right. if you're doing? But the problem is chata'i, not chata'i. Ah. My transgressions. I'm going to say what was the transgression? Transgression that comes from to jail was that there was a fly in the uh, cup or whatever was in the, in the uh, cup. Uh, that was one transgression. That wasn't multiple. Okay, so uh, he's saying, uh, I, my transgressions. Now, you're gonna, it's like going to the cop and saying, uh, let me tell you, I, I'm voluntarily telling you what I did wrong. It's dangerous for me. 
Why? Why is it damage for the steward? Because he could say, oh, you know, I remember that, and uh, back to jail. Yeah. So clearly, he's taking he's taking a chance here. Yeah. So instead of just going right to, to cut to the uh, quick of it, say, uh, Faro, I know a guy who can trump you a drink. Yeah, but then, uh, and Faro says, well, where is this guy? He, well, he's in your jail right now. Right. How do you know about that? Right. <laughs> so he's, he's, he seems to be preempting this. But yeah. everyone he's preempting. So yeah. Faro, yeah, and then yeah. he says, Paro cuts off at Oliver Dunn. So Paro was angry at his servants. Not just me. I had somebody else with me. Uh, uh, and you put, uh, put me into the jail, in the house of the uh, chamber of the butchers. Otibetzara open me and the Sara open. Okay. Uh, the baker. And we dreamt one dream and one night. And I and he, and what happened? Each kefitron chalom chalamnu, a man. Each one according to the interpretation of the dream. Did we dream? And so Rash he says chalom haroy lefitron, the dream that was fit to be interpreted. Shniftalanu that was interpreted for us, and it became all like that. Okay, fine. And died. So he said we had a dream. We want. I'm telling you the story. We, you, we angered you. We angered you and we, you threw us into jail. Well, we had a dream. We both had a dream that was fit for interpretation. And lo and behold, Vashami Tano, and there with us was an our Ivri, a, uh, a young, and if I just want to change that literally, a young Hebrew. And why, in fact, why is Rashi Te? A Rorim Habrishaim, curse of the wicked, Shein Tovatam Shalema, that their goodness is not complete. Shmaskiru, because they meant, he mentioned him in a, dis, a, dis, a despicable way. Okay, why? What does Naar mean? Shote. He's an, he's a nut. He doesn't know anything. Vain royal gadola, and this kid is not fit for greatness. How do we? How does he learn Shote? How does Rashi learn Shote? The gematria of Nar is the gematria of Shote. Numerical value of Nar is the numerical value of Shote. Fine. So then they say every, and why was he insulting there? Because means I feel the in a market. Even our language, he doesn't understand. He's not. He's never. He's not. He's not spoken. He's not a well-spoken guy. Okay, fine. That's part one. He's insulting him. Then he says, Evan the Sartavachim. More than that, he was a servant to the Chamberlain of Butchers. And what is that? He was a uh, Eved, and he was a slave. Why is that important? Tuvan Musa Mitzrayim is written in the uh, constitution, if you will, of Mitzrayim. Shane Eved Molech, that is uh, a servant, cannot rule the Lovesh Big Day Sarim, nor can he wear the clothes of the nobleman. Mm -hmm. That was part of the rule. Like in the United States of America, we have the rule that a foreigner cannot be the president, no matter how great he may be. He can't be the president, and uh, it, that's why Arnold Schwarzenegger can never be president. Right, right. You can be governor, but you can't be president. Right? Correct, only president, because yeah. president, yeah. It's, yeah. it's actually, I mean, not to get too far afield, but it's actually interesting that the presidency is the only thing they want to protect versus everybody else. Yeah. Because yeah. I think what you're happened you're was, you're a citizen, yeah. yeah, but I think what they did was, they looked at the president like we like we look at a king, yeah. oh. and that was even though we never wanted the president to be king, the uh, I think that's how people viewed it. So if you're going to run the country, quote unquote, run the country, then we want you to have a vested interest in running the country, and that means you have to be, yeah. you yeah. have to have skin in the game, yeah. which is why originally they wanted only people who paid taxes to have a vote. To what? Have a vote. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, you have to have skin in the game. Yeah. It has to mean something. Um, that's it. And I think didn't one of the, they considered the title of king for George Washington? Right, they did. Right. Uh, I, I guess it would have been an elected king, but they wanted to call him that. He was so you, used you, to it. You can't elect a king. Yeah, <laughs> the definition is, yeah, well, it goes against vote definition. You're, still, you, you, you're, right. you're, you're like, uh, uh, what was what was the television program? Queen for a day. This is a big. King uh, for four years. <laughs> well, originally it was originally it was unlimited. There was no term limits on the president originally. There was what? There was no term limits on the president originally. 
You had oh, you FDR, yeah. FDR went for three four terms. Four terms. Roos, right, right, he went for four terms. Right, and that's what they were afraid there's going to be a, a kingdom after all. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, they limited it to eight years. At that point, yeah. Right. Well, that's again ten years, but two times elected. You could serve ten years. Then there's how do you get ten years? Uh, uh, Johnson took over for Kennedy huh? with a year and a half left to go. He could have uh -huh. run in '68, but he opted not not to. Okay, that's interesting. So they, it's a ten year limit with being okay. elected only two times. So, F F F so the president, president drops dead in the first within the first two years. So then the guys then he can legally it. only the, the vice president can only run one time. Oh, that's interesting. Because yeah. okay. otherwise, the second time would put him over the ten years. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Why would yeah. sign ten years? For that reason, I'm assuming. Just because of Johnson. And if now you know, if the president dies in office within the first two years, uh -huh. uh, uh, they they didn't want the guy to go in. Ex, you know, it would have been that. You know, I'll make, you know, make a bet. I'll make a bet. I, I can just go way up hills, but <laughs> think about American politics. In the, in the last two years, you're really on the campaign trail. That's right. You're not doing it's, anything. It's starting to right. Right. You know, he's been, he and Obama were campaigning from the day they got in the office. Yep. Yep. Uh, we yep. haven't had a, off, ah. we haven't had a president that's really worked from the day one <laughs> for a long time to get, for a long time. But they've always been running. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, they never stopped running. And they both had rallies all the way through. So, oh, wow. I mean, they're just, picking yep. on a, yep. they're just picking on Trump for it. But Obama was doing the same thing. He was on TV constantly. So yeah. it's, uh, I don't know before, I forget, if Bush was running like that. It's been too long for, too long already. W? The, first, the second Bush. Yeah, he never, that didn't start till Obama. Obama started with the emails, remember? I forget. And I think then during maybe the last two years of his second term, he started with going on the rallies, uh -huh. trying to pump up for Hillary. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I think Trump's been, like you said, from the Trump from the, from the day, from the day, from the day he went in office, it's just been nothing. Right. Else. Yeah. Not MAGA. <laughs> All the way through. Hey. He never stopped. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that's what he's saying. If there was that guy, and what happened? But now stop here low. And we so he denigrates him to the nth degree. Yeah, he yeah. says he's an is a nut, he's a shota, he's a if he doesn't understand the language, he's an evid, he's not fit to be running the country. What happened? What this guy? And the Sapir we told him. Uh, and he interpreted for us a dream each patam. Each man interpreted each uh, in accordance with each man's dream. And it was as he interpreted for us, Ken Haya. That's what happened. Oti Heishi Valkani. I was returned, was made to return on my uh, my base, uh, and I was I, I came back to work for you. And uh, he says my post, which restores my post. Vioto Tala, and the baker, that guy, he was hanged. Yeah. Okay? Just as he said. So this is the guy. That you want to interpret because even though he's an R, even though he's an Ivy, even though he's an Evan, even all that, all the negatives, the guy is an idiot savant. He knows how to interpret the dreams. Yeah. He's not good for anything else. Let's not go crazy, but he knows how to interpret dreams. Hmm. So that's why they say that this uh that this is not a uh uh, that's and again he has to say I have to mention my sins, so he should have had yeah. that sin mostly shemra. <laughs> okay, so what happens? By Yishlach Paro, so Paro heard that and he sent by Yikra et Yosef and he called for Yosef. He was in a bore and they took him from the pit. They rushed him actually from the pit. Yeah. Uh, he shaved and changed his clothes. Yeah. Why did he do that? By the way. In other words, he, uh, you're in jail for 12 years. He doesn't, he looks uh, like a bum, I'm guessing. Good long hair, long beard. Probably. And now suddenly he's, before he goes to the king, the king's asking for him. He says, by the way, let, let, let me shave. And he looks presentable. I have to put a tie on. Yeah. Why? Because yeah. that's covered, uh, it says, Rashi says, it is covered for the king. It's honor for the king. Sure. You're not not because him. he thought, not because he knew he was getting out. Just because of kavod, you have to honor the situation you're walking into. So he shaved, he uh, he shaved, he changed his clothes. Be'avor al paro. 
and he came to Paro. Okay. So now, Vayom at Paro, and Paro said to Yosef, Chalom Chalamti, I dreamt a dream, Vote En Oto En, there was no interpretation to it. Vayanishamati, but I heard Alech about you saying, Alemor saying, Tishma Chalom Levtor Oto. You hear a dream to interpret it. I heard that's your reputation. You are the dream interpreter extraordinaire. Okay. When Rashi says, what does it mean, tishma, you hear it? Tazin, you listen, v'tavin chalom, and you, un- and you understand or perceive the dream to interpret it. Mm-hmm. So he says, Ta- tishma or shma is a language of havana, tazin of understanding and Ma. listening. Mm-hmm. Like when it says that Yosef heard, ashelot tishma l'shono, okay, so, 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 so on and so forth. By the way, this is going to become important when we come to Shema Yisrael. Yeah. Whenever you see the word Shema, it means understanding and listening. Two, two of those concepts. It doesn't just, it's not just I heard. Yeah. It went through my ears and I heard whatever you said, but I uh, didn't understand. No, you have to say everything. So what's, yeah, no, by the way, he sets Yosef up for disaster, by the way. I heard that you can hear a dream and interpret it. So Yosef, now has to back away from that position because let's say for one second that Yosef would hear the dream and he would interpret it, but it wouldn't be to the Pharaoh's liking. Where's he going to end up again? You take your chances. Where's he going to end up again? Though? In, in the jail. Yeah. Go back to jail. Who, who needs you? So he, sa- he says, no, no. Uh, let's, let's move it away from me for a second. Ah. Especially if he has to say something negative. He also doesn't know. Remember, one guy, he already had an experience where he had to tell one guy he's going to die. Yeah. So you don't want to tell the father you're going to die. So that's not a good situation either. You'll be killed for that. So Vayan Yosef at Paro more. Yosef answered Paro saying, Bela die. It's not me. It's not me. Duh, please. The bunch on this, I mean, uh, Mr. Mr. Faro, this is beyond me. Elohim. Yan et Shalom Paro. It's Hashem. He should answer. Or he will answer the peace or the welfare of uh, Pharaoh. I wonder if Pharaoh's interpreters would have briefed Yosef and said that, hey, Pharaoh rejected our concepts of this dream being about him personally. I wonder if he would have said they would have said that to him. No, because they don't want to help him. <laughs> it's not it's not to their benefit to help him. Make they, them look that much worse, right. in other words. I mean you have to think about it. When you were in computers, yeah. okay, a young whippersnapper is coming in yeah. who has never really worked on computers. You don't know him, but uh, and your boss is saying we can't fix this. And this young and he said, "But I heard you, kid. I heard you're good, so fix yeah. it." Okay, so the guy comes in and says, Ooh. "I'm new. I don't know. I'm just out of school. I mean, it's, not, uh, it's theoretical." Mm-hmm. He goes in, bang, he fixes in five minutes. Well, you didn't want to tell him what you did. Right, because if you told him what you did, now he doesn't have to work as hard, and he's building off of you. So you wanted to actually prove his yeah, salt. Yeah, yeah, uh, is yeah, that the expression? Yeah. You want to prove him salt, uh, but you want to prove you want to prove himself. So you're not going to help him out. You're going to stand there and watch and say, okay, let, well, go on. let's see what you can do. And by the way, if if he messes up, it also gets the chief baker potentially, uh, chief wine steward potentially thrown back into jail too. So I can get rid of two people at once. So it's just not worth it to the to the magicians or the uh, wise people, the his wise men, to give him any information. And on top of that, Pharaoh's going to try to trick him to give him the, uh, to make sure he really tells the truth. So it's it's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. It's a lot of pressure on Yosef to come up with uh, a good answer. So what happens by the El Yosef Paro didn't. Hesitate, he still told Yosef, Bachalami spoke and said, In my dream, he didn't or made al or behold, I w- I am standing on as really I was, because you can go, I, but it's omade is present tense, he's speaking present tense. Uh, I was standing on the shore of the Nile again. Here, he doesn't say again, look at the language. If you think about it, in the first one, he says, You're standing omade al or. On the Isle, uh, on the Nile. Here it yeah, says, yeah, yeah. Al Safat Hayo Or. So he's being humble here suddenly. 
Ah. Either he's being humble or he's telling what he first saw in the dream. And this throws it in. You know, it's, what is what is true here? When he's telling the dream, why did you say over the uh, Nile? And therefore, I am better than God. Could, is, could he say that in front of the people? Yeah. That's another question. Here I'm going to say it in front of the people. I'm, I think I'm better than God if you're using that language. And I'm the top God. Can you really say that? The Nile is what feeds us, not you. You're going to go to the Nile. You go to the Nile. You do whatever you do. You have a, a, Every uh, morning you have a convention and you go to the Nile. Fine, you communicate. But clearly you can't. The Nile does no resistance to you. Uh, it does what it wants. So to say you're over the Nile, so you, you can't say that. Yeah. So he says, I went to, I was at the shore, the shoreline of the Nile. The name in New York. So again, from the from the Nile, Olof Sheva Parobriot, Basar Bifotora, Turna Ba'achu. So these seven good looking, uh, healthy cows came out of good appearance, came up uh, and were grazing in the marshlands. Vinisha Vavrod Acherod Olor Achare and Dolov Rakot Raot Toar Maod Rakot Basar. And the other seven came up. Who were lean and bad of looking appearance, very bad looking appearance, and was uh, empty of meat. I've never seen such a, such a uh, bad thing in the whole land of Egypt. He's really adding to this. Uh, he didn't say that in the original dream. He's adding a lot. He's saying, I never saw such a thing. It's unbelievable. Who had ever seen that emaciated cow like this? Okay. To Chana Parod and the Arakol Raod at Sheva Parod have been shown And what happened was those thin, bad-looking, empty, bad-looking cows ate the good-looking and healthy. Uh, the excuse me, uh, 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 the first cows that were healthy, the Tavon El Kabena, and they came into their innards. Lo no dal ki el Kabena, but it was not known that they came into the innards. Notice. They didn't gain weight. Mare and Ra, Kashibat Kila, and their appearance was bad, like it was in the beginning. What a dream that is, okay? I'm seeing these seven skinny cows eat these seven gigantic cows and not gain any weight. What's going on? Uh, that's a nightmare. It's either one, it's a nightmare, or two, can you make that into a pill? Uh -huh, uh -huh. They have a pill for that now, yes. Do you want to get that door, please? Okay. The air of a Chalomi, and then I saw in the dream, uh, in my dream. Uh, okay, <laughs> when he has feast, uh, that's why I saw in the dream. <laughs> that behold, hey, how you know, there were seven uh sheaves uh that were going up on uh, seven ears of corn that went up on one stalk that were full and uh good. And here, here's the word that he lies, and he says, Behold, there were seven uh ears of corn that were, as he said. Uh, withered, thin, and scorched by the east wind. And what happened was once again, the Shibalim, the these ears of corn, these thin ones, ate or swallowed, excuse me, swallowed up the uh the seven good looking seven good ears of corn. But Omar so and what happens? He doesn't say anything about I didn't see them grow. It's just they covered it, they swallowed them. Okay. Yeah. And I told the yeah. Khatum, I told the, the, the wizards, they mug at me yeah. and he said, and they couldn't tell me what it was. There's a tremendous amount of information that he gives, so, and I don't have the time to go more, but this part where it says, Sumo de Kadim was where he was trying to catch Yosef. If Yosef would have uh, uh, interpreted every part of the dream, he would have known that it was a lie. That he was not, uh, it was that Yosef was making it up as he went along. But the fact that he doesn't answer, he really he answers in a grandiose term, telling him that's one dream and what's going to happen. And he, but he didn't interpret that which was uninterpretable. Huh. He didn't try to fit it in. So that's when he knew there was a true interpretation. Huh. That's that's why he accepts his words versus everybody else. Okay, well. Uh,